Today I want to talk about pipelines and we're on the whiteboard for this because I realize pipelines is a term that comes up a lot and we're often using it at different layers of abstraction. I want to talk about just three of them where I'm saying this all the time and hopefully hopefully this will impact the term a little bit and help somebody out there. So uh, pipelines or DAGs, directed acyclic graphs, this is what do we mean like you know a workflow of some kind. You'll see this, right? I tend to see this at three specific levels. So the first one is the model level. So you'll hear something like, oh, we have an ML pipeline. Well, what does that mean? Typically, that means something along the process of we've got some data that we're gonna feed in to either train or do inferencing serving for this model. And let's say, for example, we're trying to predict a stock price and we have two input pieces of data, like the, the historical stock prices, so it's like Apple, it's a very high number, and then maybe the temperature in Celsius, which is gonna be a lower number. So we may wanna apply some sort of scaling to those, to those numeric values so that one number doesn't unduly influence the model simply because it's larger. You know, we recognize that there's an impact here from just the size of the numbers. So anyway, so that sort of thing, that sort of scaling of a, of a feature would be in a model pipeline. That's an example where we have a model pipeline, and if we're building this with something like scikit-learn, you'll even see when you start to step through the code that you have an explicit, hey, we're creating a pipeline in this step. And this means we'll be doing some of these transformations as the programmer writes them, uh, but it will be in, it will it will actually be called a little pipeline. So you'll see that. And that will get serialized and shipped. So next up is the data pipeline. And this is where it can get a little confusing because the data pipeline encompasses typically, or it's coming from some sort of a workflow tool, a DAG tool, like an Airflow or a Prefect or a DAGs or something like that. And it may contain your ML training and serving. So those ML pipelines may be contained here, but the data pipelines are like, hey, we've got data that's coming from our website, from these third-party sources. It's changing on some, some basis. We are aggregating it, we're piping it somewhere else. Whether or not data is the new oil, it's, it, you know, I like Noah Giff's term that it's more like water in a town. We want it flowing to all these places. We want people to turn the tap on and have it. So you'll have pipelines set up to basically, again, as data comes in from these other sources, we're gonna be moving it through. And in, within that pipeline, we may be doing some filtering or running some of those ML pipelines as part of this. Once we get new data from the website, we wanna retrain. Every week, we wanna do some sort of scoring, whatever it may be, but these the data pipelines may, may include your ML pipelines. And the final term where right, you hear it pipeline all the time is with CICD, you'll have a CICD pipeline. This is kind of the end of our cascade here, or this is these are all cascading. So the CICD pipeline, CI for continuous integration, every time I make a change or when I make a change, I'm gonna check this into source control. In theory, if I'm doing CI, I'll have some sort of build process run. So what is a build process? Like we're gonna run all of my code that will run my data pipelines or some portion of them. It will run my model pipeline. So it, it's all kind of encapsulated. And then for the CD part, the deployment step, hey, we've got that stock market model again. We wanna have it inferencing, actually running predictions, telling us this, buy this stock, sell this one, or here's your target price. We'll have this deploy so it's actually out there in some environment, maybe not in production, but in some environment serving predictions. And we'll have, when this runs, it will often involve some, potentially some data pipeline as well as some model pipelines. I mean, typically in, a, in an ML deployment, you're absolutely gonna have some of this going on and some of this going on, but not required. But again, so in, to kind of summarize here, you'll hear the term pipeline a lot. It can be, it can mean three, at least three distinct things. And typically an ML pipeline, again, is gonna to refer to like this serialization step for transforming data for specific model training and serving. So that's stuff like, taking of a value that's between zero and 100 and applying a scalar. And I, I kind of made up zero and 100, but like scaling feature values, scaling text values. The data pipelines will be like, hey, as you get external data, we want to kick off these jobs, grab data from S3, put it into the relational database, stuff like that. It can include, as part of that, it's often common, especially with tools like DAX, you're to run your ML pipelines as well. And then finally, kind of looping all of them together is your CI and CD pipelines. So these are, hey, I'm, I'm checking, we've made changes here and here or somewhere, let's build everything, let's make sure we didn't break anything, let's run some deployments, let's make sure that the new changes we've made, we can actually test them, we can see them, or we can put them into production. And those will be that final pipeline step. Uh, and some tools here, I should have mentioned some like GitHub Actions, Travis CI, Circle CI, and the various uh, co you know, AWS and GCP and Azure variations. Um, those are common at the CICD level. So if you heard the term pipelines, these are at least three years where it's used. You know, hope you found this helpful.